Hey, you guys know about that dark and darker drama that I talked about yesterday? Well, the whole thing kind of just blew open today with a huge statement from Iron Maze Studios on their Discord server. This is today's response from Iron Maze Studios. You can see that this is absolutely massive. They're talking about all the legal stuff here. I'm going to go through some of this with you. They actually linked a bunch of really interesting stuff that we need to take a look at. But if you're not familiar with the drama, the TLDR is that Nexon is suing Iron Maze Studios over Dark and Darker. They claim they're copying their Project P3. They filed into copyright claims and did a cease and desist, which made Steam remove Dark and Darker from the Steam store. Fast forward like one day, and here we are to this really interesting, juicy response. And we got lots of cool stuff to take a look at together. First thing we want to look at is their TLDR header before all this other stuff, which is that there's a link to the DMCA takedown from Nexon. There's a link to their response to one of the exhibits of the copyright claim. And then they're talking about other things they'll be doing soon. Is they're going to make a response in Korean since this is newsworthy in Korea. And they're going to talk about responsive concept arts about copyrighted character design, source list, video showing key milestone builds, git logs, etc. Okay, so the most interesting thing here is to take a look at their response to Exhibit D and the DMCA takedown. We got a bunch of stuff to look at too. So let's go to the official DMCA takedown notice. I didn't even know what one actually looks like till today. So there's basically all this like the summary saying they're copywriting us, literary like a summary, and then it goes down to the exhibits. We got Exhibit A. There's all this. We got Exhibit B, etc. And now one thing that I was like, okay, this was very curious and interesting to me. We have um, identified the copyright work that you claim is being infringed. They have these eight or nine things. And I was like, wait a minute. They're saying um, they own this and it's been registered with the U.S. Copyright Office. Office. And I was like, wait a minute. U.S. Office, US Copyright Office. I bet knowing the, the government in the United States, there's probably online records. And I could probably just look at these. I was like, you know what? I'm going to go take a look. Can we find these? And it appears that we can. This is from the U.S. government, whatever, catalog of copyright stuff. And I put in P3, whatever, Project P3. And we got all these things that they claim. Uh, and when you go to them, there's not much detail on here, though, for anything on this, uh, other than what they give, like, the names of things and stuff. Uh, but they do, in fact, have this. But what's very interesting is all of these copyright... Uh, all these copyright registrations were registered in February of this year. So not back when they made the game, which I'm not really sure the legality of how any of that works. So maybe that's normal. I actually don't know. But that was very interesting to take a look at. So there they all are right there. So yes, they actually went and claimed like in February, hey, look, we're going to register. We made all this stuff. What else is really interesting here is uh, they're claiming that they copyrighted all this stuff that really only seems pertinent to the uh, lawsuit. Uh, and nothing else. Maybe. I'm not really sure, though. They got all this stuff here. But it's like Cleric, Barbarian, Ranger, Tanker, Thief, and Wizard. Which, I don't know. As we get into this, you might see that they, they kind of did rip off from the game. But I just wonder how, like, where the line is of legality between how much are you allowed to be inspired by a game and how much is just hard ripping. And, and I don't know. We're going to take a look at some of this other stuff, though. And down in Exhibit B, I don't really recognize. I don't really understand a lot of this. But they are saying that the year of completion for each of these things that they're claiming was 2021. So that's like their claim. Exhibit C is pretty small. They're just talking about Ju Hyun uh, transferring files to his private server without obtaining authorization back in 2021. Uh, which also, I, I would want to keep in mind here, that was during a bunch of like, you know, COVID stuff still. So it's possible that it was for COVID related reasons. Not entirely sure what was going on there. But they're just claiming that, yeah, he had a homemade, a private server built on a home PC and was transferring files uh, from the P3 project over to that server. And then we get to Exhibit D, which is the most interesting part because Iron Mace actually responded to this. And I've actually worked in Unreal Engine, so I have some interesting thoughts about some of this. So they're talking about the comparison of resource file names. And they're talking about uh, there are 2,338 files with the same names. And then they say, even when they exclude files that are already included on Unreal, so they're going to be the same for everybody, there are a thousand more than a thousand files that have the same file names. And below is the list of resource file names that are, are identical in Dark and Darker and the P3 game, which was really weird to me because they said more than a thousand files have the same names. Here's the list. And I actually counted the list is like somewhere between 500 and 600 files. So that, that was kind of weird. Maybe there's some other resource material and something else that's not included in this. But anyway, there's all these things right here. And uh, we're going to look at the response from Iron Mace on this because apparently they have an actual response to this one. But this one is super interesting. So this is Exhibit E. And this is character design copying. And they're going to show the difference. P3 game, Dark Dark have the same character types, which is very, you know, okay. So let's say they were inspired, right? Uh, well, anyway, so here is the P3 game. Let me see if I can zoom this in for you. Here we go. P3, what the Barbarian looked like, what it looks like in Dark and Darker. 
it kind of it kind of is a little sus uh cleric dark and dark versus p3 uh, that is that is very very similar that's extremely similar i'll admit uh the tanker which is now the fighter in dark and darker again very similar very very similar the wizard i mean it's, it's definitely very similar still even has the cross belts he has those cross belts dude like i i, I would say a wizard just looks like a wizard right but the cross belts how many wizards have some weird cross belts like what okay uh the thief uh very similar even his body language is similar with his arms and stuff uh, but you know okay it, it is definitely similar uh we got the ranger which i don't know man it's a ranger I, what yeah but i mean there are similarities it does feel similar kind of when you look at that so that that is a little i'll admit that's a little damning feeling all right we got other elements that they claim are copied uh they have uh key concepts and things so one of them uh setting structural design uh dungeon with brick dark brick walls as backer setting the game introduce torch related in-game features that allow you to oh, turn torches on and off to light up or extinguish torches maximize atmosphere change lighting etc p3 game uh this is the i don't know i don't understand this though i don't understand I, actually i'm not i'm not buying this one though because they're saying the torches are interactable but then all they're gonna do is show their one screenshot that they've shown since 20 this is literally the only screenshot we have a p3 a game that i've ever seen is this one right here anyway so there's this doesn't show the torch dark and dark it shows the interactable torch uh, i think p3 are they are they talking about the torch in the hand because that's uh, that one's lost me anyway the key concept uh so the storyline uh p3's game description versus dark and darkers let's read them so uh despite the danger many adventurers venture into the unknown dungeon after hearing humors rumors of great fortune in the dungeon uh unfathomable fortunes await the brave and the foolish willing to delve into the devastated depths of the ancient city i don't know that that's i don't know i don't know unless something was lost to translation that that's not that similar anyway english translation for this thing adventurers form a party with other trusted members and venture into the dark and dangerous dungeon they may find themselves in danger upon encountering giant monsters or discover valuable loot slash treasure Band together with your friends and use your courage, wits, and cunning to under, over, uncover mythical tre treasures, defeat gruesome monsters while staying one step ahead of the other devious treasure hunters. I feel like this is a reach. Giant monsters discover valuable loot treasure, uh, uncover mythical treasures, and defeat gruesome monsters. I, I'm not seeing it. Members and venture into the dark and dangerous dungeon. Band together with your friends this i i dude if i was the judge i'd be like dismiss that evidence that evidence is actual garbage that that's literal like that is such a reach that's such a reach anyway uh the green ones okay you can keep everything you have plundered if you escape the dungeon safely and avoid countless dangers such as traps monsters and other players once you've plundered your riches now comes the hard part getting out alive dude that that <laughs> that's just a the game is similar i could literally we could take the game description of escape from tarkov and claim this is a copy if they're going to go off this i bet i bet the game description for tarkov is also similar by this definition this is nuts okay wow and then and then okay this is where like i feel like it goes off the rails all right let's take, let's take a look at this one all right dark and darker has all the characteristics of the p3 game now i can understand if they have all of them but still it's just so funny to read this all right it belongs to the pvp pve genre this genre of game requires users to basically compete with each other, player versus player, but also to fight the in-game environment. Monsters. Dude, there are so many games. Daisy, Tarkov, like, we could sue anybody apparently off that. Okay. Has both the FPS and RPG elements. Users cannot defeat other users only with a simple attack Users cannot defeat other, other users only with a simple attack sign and have to aim and shoot others use other users to defeat them fps genre moreover users grow stronger as they obtain various items and go on adventures element are tarkov daisy a, a million other games uh, conan exiles or something like arc survival evolved they're all they're all in the crosshair boys all right game starting point 16 users participate in one game the game starts from selecting characters at the tavern where a user can communicate with other users if if that is if that's true i mean because that's just a claim we, they, they say this but we don't get a cp3 at all apparently maybe the court the court will i guess but it is a little sus if like in p3 you also start in a tavern and then there's 16 people and you're all like hey guys what up in the tavern like that is kind of weird 
But that's a little that's a that's like that that one has a little bit of a little bit of merit to it, teeny bit. Uh but even then, would that would that be copyright infringement? I mean, how many battle royales start with air dropping? You know, Fortnite, you jump out of the battle bus, right? Oh, we're gonna where are we dropping, boys? Drop a tomato town, and then we got I don't know, uh, what is it, PUBG? And they all just copied each other on that same concept. So I don't if if that is if that's not okay, then the person who made PUBG can now sue like if they sue that and that's like the main point, the sticking point, then I guess the guy who made PUBG can now sue Fortnite and stuff, because we all start by dropping out of the sky. So I'm not hundred percent on that. Character class consists of the tanker, fighter, the barbarian, the cleric, the thief, the wizard, and the ranger. And it's like, this has some merit to it that they ripped off them. But at the same time, it's like, you know how many times I've seen Ymir Wall from Smite in other games? Now it's in Valorant. And I'm sure it's in other games too. And maybe they probably ripped off of someone else too. You know, like abilities get ripped off from one game to another all the time. And so it's like... I don't know, like say P3 had come out and they had all these classes and then they made this game and they were like, hey, we're going to have all those same classes and we're just going to like, you know, name some of them a little bit different. I don't know that that would be against the rules. It's like, you don't know, you go in, it's like you got a tank, a DPS and a support. You can't say a World of Warcraft trademark that like, uh, you know, it's a little gray. Other, oh, the background setting of the book of, of both games is a dungeon made up of, <laughs> sorry, I don't know why it's so funny to me, <laughs> made up of dark bricks. Anyway, the games have torch-related features, and they offer a fixed attack pattern for each type of weapon. Mordhow? Mountain Blade B Banner Lord? Anyway, in both games, users' interact interaction with in-game objects such as boxes and doors are in the form of casting and certain amount of time is required to equip or replace equipment. Again, like, I don't feel like this should be something that's copyrighted. Like, I've played lots of games where you break barrels and you open doors. The opening doors slowly is a new thing, but at the same time, is shooting an AK-47 in a video game copyrightable? You know, it's, it's you're opening a door with a cast time. Like, although I did see this thing about Mass Effect. Uh, was it, I don't know if it was Mass Effect or someone else. They copyrighted the, the, the little circle interactable wheel thing. And then uh, made it so that you couldn't... Like, there was this whole video on, like, five things that are copyrighted from random game development like that. It was really interesting. So, maybe, maybe not. You can get away. I don't know. Legally, we'll, we'll have to see what's what's going on with that. So, that was, that, was the, that was the most interesting stuff from that. That was... This whole last part was just a, a treat. It was so funny. All right. So, Exhibit D. Remember, we talked about Exhibit D. We got to talk about Exhibit D some more because Iron Mace actually had this huge response to it that I love. Now, here's where I can really come in for you guys because I have used Unreal Engine. I know a ton about Unreal Engine. Okay, so we got all these assets. Those assets that they listed, those like 600 assets, and they're talking about where they came from and stuff. So, for example, all these ones come from the Unreal Marketplace right here. Ancient Treasures Pack. Uh, I don't know how much it costs because I can't see it. It's all Korean. But yeah, okay, the Ancient Treasures Pack. So the way that this works in Unreal, if you don't know, and this is why so many Unreal Engine games all look identical, they all just go to the store, and then they'll just be like, all right, I want armor. And then they'll be like, all right, Necromancer armor, buy it. And it's a lot of times these studios that have like million dollar budgets. So they just go in here and they spend like $100,000 on just buying assets. And everybody's using the assets. And maybe they have some 3D artists like touch them up a little, change the texture a little bit, you know, remove a belt or something, right? And then, and then you know, ship it. But they're all, like so many assets are built off of the same assets. And that's why right now Unreal Engine games all have that same look to them all the time because that happens. Anyway, so that's the Unreal project right there. That's one. This thing. Um, so they got all these assets right here, and these are all from SM Blockout, and they're saying that they copyright, they stole these files are the same. Well, if we go to this, this is just apparently some plugin for Unreal Engine 4 and 5 that anybody can go and download, and is probably necessary for certain aspects of the game that they want. They probably learned this when they worked, when whoever it was worked at P3, and then when they're developing, they're like, guys, you gotta try this plugin. This plugin I used at work was really good. It's a great Unreal plugin. It'll definitely make the game wait. Like, this is pretty not illegal even slightly. Not even a teeny bit illegal. This is like the opposite of illegal. Anyway, so, DM car, KR, Pook, whatever. Uh, we got this a Fantasy Dungeon. Uh, all this stuff right here, smoke and all this. So we got the Fantasy Dungeon pack. Uh, so it's $100 for the Fantasy Dungeon pack, by the way. All right, Fantasy Dungeon Pack. We got Fantasy Dungeon 2. I don't know. I never want to say that word. Usuary or something. $130. Man, your boys at Iron Man spending money making this game. All right, so we got that. That was a lot of the files. Niche, Lamp, Column, Bones Pile. Oh, my God. Uh, and then we got this Realm Kit I. All right, Realm Kit 1, I mean. Uh, so that is... Wow. So it's looking to me... <laughs> I 
goddamn P3. P3 is a copy paste Unreal Marketplace game. They literally just bought Unreal Marketplace assets and just used them and called it a game. And then Dark and Darker did the same thing. And then they're like, you're stealing from us. That's what it's looking like when you look at these. I mean, this looks a lot like Dark and Darker. Look at these assets. This looks a lot. That's literally that one variation of hell where you have to parkour over the lava. That's it right there. That's literally hell right there. I know that part from Dark and Darker. Okay. So there's that. They have some game lift server SDK plugin that you buy from Amazon. I didn't know you could buy Amazon and then incorporate it into an Unreal Engine thing. Okay. And then we got the Adventure Environment Pack, which is okay. Uh, I don't really... I see where they got some of the assets from this. Oh, oh yeah, that's that's that one room. That's that room in Dark and Darker where there's all those bastard skeleton archers and there's, it's so easy to get stuck and screwed in there. There's spike traps everywhere. I know exactly what room that's... That screenshot right there is that room. Like, I... Oh, my God. I know that one. Okay. We got that. That's a huge one. All the ones that start with SM over here. Uh, that is going to be this. That's crazy. All right. And then all this archway floor and whatever. Yeah. Oh, my gosh, man. Like, freaking uh, Nexon. This Nexon's trolling. They know what... Like, this, this makes the next... For me, as a not lawyer and not knowing how law works... This makes the Nexon lawsuit lose a lot of merit. That they would include these things that were obviously not theirs to begin with. That they just bought from the store. I mean, I guess they make the claim like, well, they obviously stole from our project because they knew which assets to buy from the store and bought the same ones. Which is still very, very sketchy feeling to me. So then we get to the actual bread and butter of this. We have all of these assets now, which were made by iron mace according to iron mace and they have the same names we have backstab we have arrow footprint player controller throwing knife etc and their claim is that it's a word or concept commonly found in typical medieval fantasy games utilizing the recommended uegs naming convention same file name as p3 but different content or and or implementation now this is where it's really interesting okay so i actually know about unreal engine and yes, this actually does make sense. So uh, BP is a blueprint. That's what you use in order to make some of these things. So like if you make a, a throwing knife, uh, if you want there to be more than one that all behave the same way, you make a blueprint that has a throwing knife. And then everyone, you spawn the blueprint, not the knife. And that's a then the blueprint is a knife that has all these things attached to it in the code. And then you can be like, all right, whenever it's this spawn this way, it does all these, has all these behaviors every single time. And now you don't have to rebuild it every single time it spawns. But it's, it's it, you know, that's how that works. Uh, GA, I'm not familiar with the file names of everything in Unreal Engine. So GA, GC, GE would be the same kind of thing. Uh, WB, UI, phone, whatever. Uh, and then these are just at raw assets. So looking at the raw assets, for example, uh, we have Trap Expert. That one's a little suspicious. That's a very weird name. A Trap Expert asset. That feels like a rip name. But at the same time, I don't know the position of the guy who left P3 and works in Iron Mace or which ones. So it is possible. And I think they can make the defense of when we worked on P3, that is what we named it. That name was just in my head. That's what it's called. It's not very normal to me sounding. But at the same time, yeah, I, that makes sense. If you worked on the one game and this idea you're thinking of is called a trap expert, which might be, it, it wasn't Korean, right? They, they live in Korea. So trap expert sounds weird in, in English, but it could be make more sense in Korean. You know what I mean? That that makes like a normal name. Anyway, tracking, toughness, torch. They're ripping off torch. That's it, man. That's the, the smoking gun. Anyway, throwing knife, smoke bomb, smash, shield expert. Again, the expert thing. Again, I'm thinking it's gotta be something Korean that makes that make more sense. Maybe it's like saying something else like, shield ability or something I, I don't know shield skill i don't know anyway uh in my lock pick in my is also another thing lock pick lock pick so we see all this stuff there's backstab there's rest there's interact there's throwing item item actor and the one that was really weird to me and i want what, what's your guys thoughts on this a francisca axe like that one how many of you when you think of medieval stuff think of a francisca axe I'll be honest, I didn't know there was such thing as a Francisca axe until I played Dark and Dark. I never even heard that name in my entire life. And I've played a lot of medieval games. I've never heard about Francisca. So that is a little sus. Like, but again, you can make the We worked with B3. There was a Francisca axe. We thought that Francisca axe was cool, so we're going to put it in our game. I don't see anything illegal with that. Just like airdropping from one battle royale to the next. I thought that was cool, so we put it in ours. Apparently, they didn't get away with that, and it's not illegal. I remember PUBG sued, and they, I think they lost. So. 
that's not anything. And then uh, we got the WB item with all this stuff. So this does feel reasonable. Like, especially if I was able to see the items side by side, because they're, they're claiming different content or implementation. And I, I think they mean implementation as in like the, if it's a blueprint, for example, the blueprint has different code in it. So it's implemented differently. Unless they mean like we literally stole it, but we used it different, which I doubt. I doubt that's what they're saying. I doubt they would do that. But who knows? We'll see. Anyway, we got all this stuff. I, lo I love looking at this marketplace stuff, man. This marketplace stuff just tickles me. It's so funny. Medieval. Oh, that dude. I need, I, I'm making, I need to make a game and just use all the stuff. There's the helmet from Bannerlord. Oh my God. Did Bannerlord take that? Because you can't. They're just, they're just object file. Not object file. Whatever they are. Like the 3D assets. You can just move them over to Bannerlord. Oh, there's the, the Regal Gambeson. They got the Regal Gambeson from here. And then they, oh, I see the, the OP cleric armor back there. And a lot of this is recolors. They recolor. Oh, there's the, they just straight took the, um, they didn't even change it at all. The uh, fighter armor or is that, yes, I think that's a fight or is that the barbarian armor? I can't remember. Look at that. Oh my God. $280. Jeez. All right. Medieval armor. And we got this one, the medieval dungeon. Oh, oh my God. I know this room. I know this. I know this. I know this, dude. I've seen this so many times in Dark and Darker. This, like, style they have right here. Oh, my God. All right. Skeleton Army. Ah, oh, dude. That's a good pack. That's a good pack. Oh, wow. There's, there's this. That's, that's the OP skeleton. That's that asshole skeleton that ever, nobody wants to fight because they overtuned him. He has, like, a trillion HP. Oh, my God. That's nuts. Okay. That's so much fun to watch. Like, this is so much fun to look through. We got... Or VFX. Oh, this is where they got some of the wizard spells. Okay. And then we got the... Uh, what is this? FX. Oh, yeah. This is where they got some of the basic things for different spells. I don't know which ones, but I was going to use one of these in a game I was going to make at one point. So I think that's the exact pack, actually. And then sci-fi and whatever. Yep. So we got more. Just You can take these and you can, you can edit them. You can go in and you can just change some numbers and it changes how the effect looks. So you buy these as a base and then you just go in there, change some numbers and then it looks different and you just try to get it how you want it to look. It's basically how that works. Uh, and then Unreal Engine auto-generated, Unreal Engine config file. Yeah, default engine.ini, by the way, guys. Yes, can confirm that is a default engine file. And if they're getting sued for that, then I get sued for that because I'm working on a game and I have default engine.ini in it. Anyway, uh, WI's icons created Unreal Assets due to event-based packaging. Sounds reasonable to me. Audio kinetic and um, WY's icons generated, blah, blah, blah. Fence folder, textures folder, auto generated. Yeah. And that's, that's their like counterclaim to that. Also, when we go back to their actual statement, which we haven't even gone through, and I'm going to try to give you the juiciest little tidbits here because it's a very long thing. We're going to try to get through it real fast. Um, so we're talking about the thing I talked about. So due to mandatory remote work policy, uh, COVID-19, all that, uh, the accused member actually got multiple written authorizations from executive members at Nexon from 2020 to 2021, allowing him to utilize an external personal server to improve performance of his team. After utilizing the personal service for almost a year, the accused member asked the leadership if it was okay to continue using personal servers. Leadership told him to refrain from using the personal servers. The accused member agreed to take down the servers as long as he could maintain the performance of his team by having his programming team come to the office, bypassing the company-wide remote work policy. Then, the accused member initiated the takedown of the personal servers, but due to the uncertainty of sporadic COVID waves, taking down the server in a quick and exhaustive manner was not a high priority. As a result, some automated scripts related to the build machine were left running on his personal server at this time. When the buildings next to his office were shut down due to co confirmed COVID cases, he took a risk and fully set up the, his personal service to aid in development. Since all company machines were monitored using a company-wide endpoint solution, the existence and usage of his personal servers, ones that were subject to approvals and reapprovals, must be reasonably known to Nexon over this multi-month period of development. Not a single warning was received from that security team, so it was easy to construe... construe it was as acknowledged that his actions were acceptable. Otherwise, it would mean that Nexon would be failing to at taking reasonable measures to maintain the confidentiality of their assets. So that does make sense. He might be just doing it as COVID. And then, you know, there's another COVID wave and he's just like, okay, I'll just turn it back on. And I don't feel like going through the bureaucracy red tape of getting it approved over like three weeks that we're going to, I mean, that's like the three, what you have where it's going to work or he just did it. I don't know. It's a little gray. But still, that makes sense. It's reasonable. And then we go down some more. We got this really interesting part. So he, this guy worked closely with Nexon. 
He made it clear that the reason he was leaving was due to uncertain atmosphere fostered at the company. He also stated that he'd welcome the team's talents for his next endeavor. He made it clear that he'd likely pursue a project in the same genre as P3 Project, but explicitly clarified that any development would be made completely from scratch. And here's what this is super interesting. This fact has been noted in witness testimony collected by the police investigating a separate personal lawsuit filed against the accused member by Nexon. So this actually was, he's left on, I'm going to make my own P3. It's going to be better than your P3, but I'm going to do it from scratch. We're not going to use any of your assets or anything, though. And we also got this. Apparently, right after that guy left Nexon, instead of letting him leave, they abruptly sent internal audit team, accused him of stealing files, uh, you know, all this stuff, harassment, lawyers, like, sued him and stuff. And then also another thing is that I didn't know this, but... Nine of the 20 plus P3 project team members voluntarily left Nexon to join Iron Maze. So it, there's a lot of like, I feel like legal standing here of we have all these people who worked on P3. So file names being the same, for example, well, that's, that's what we called the trap in P3. It was trap expert file. That's just what we call it. So that's what we think. Call. There's like, there's lots of like, I feel like that they do some standing based on that just because all these people were familiar with the old game. And just the, we're going to make a game that's very similar. That's the goal. And that's, as far as I'm aware, that's relatively legal based on, you know, the history of Battle Royale games. And we go down to this and they say that the takedown notice then states Nexon's P3 game has never been disclosed to a third party during this period in an attempt to strengthen their claims. However, that claim will be clearly proven false. They disclosed P3 in a media showcase in August 2021 to members of the gaming media who then wrote about it in multiple blogs. Like this blog right here that they link to, which if you scroll down through here, you'll eventually come up to p2 p3 project with the infamous screenshot that we've all seen like a trillion times which does look similar a little similar uh we can see their map their map's different but you know similar the wall uh, again similar because all the unreal assets were all bought like exact same assets in the store um but that's pretty reasonable it's literally legal just buy unreal assets so yeah okay then we got this really interesting one you guys gotta see this the takedown notice then states that no other games had the same concept genre and plot as the p3 game even though none of the contents of these categories are original and other games like expedition agartha have all three that are similar what is this let's take a look at this so i found expedition agartha on steam it released august 18th 2022 as an early access game and when we take a look at this trailer uh, it definitely does look very similar as far as combat goes to Dark and Darker. I've never even heard of this game. I need to try this game out sometime. What does it cost? Free to play. Free to play. We can all go try Mixed Review Expedition of Agartha today. Yeah, that definitely... I can see why. So the concept is not new. Although, this was in 2022. It got released. So that kind of muddies the waters. P3, I guess, was the original, I guess. But... But by that claim, this game's copying, so they should take down this game, too. And then we get to my favorite statement in their legal statement, and I, I really want to pick this one apart with you guys. The notice then states that within a mere 10 months of forming Iron Mace, its demo slash test version of Dark and Darker became publicly available in August 2022. The notice states that it is impossible for Iron Mace to have developed Dark and Darker in such a short time frame without using Nexon's trade secrets and confidential information, dude. I just love this. This is such a troll. That is such a troll. I'll go over to a second. Let's read some more. Again, without offering proof, here's the, uh, the response from Iron Mace. Just because it may be difficult for a large bureaucratic company such as Nexon to develop games in such a short time frame, does not mean it is impossible for another studio big small new or old to develop games quickly first iron mace started with a larger team at the beginning of development secondly the starting team com composition was better set for quick development with a heavy focus on programming thirdly the p3 project team did not have a server programmer while iron mace made sure to have one from the very start due to the importance of building a stable server architecture okay so i'm breaking this apart 10 months in order to get that first play test I've actually looked into making games. I'm actually working on a game right now. Link for that in the description. Okay. Absolutely. If I, I can tell you right effing now, if I had a team of 10 people who are like senior people from an, a pre existing game, and we're going to make a game that's similar to what they were already working on, 10 months is more than enough time of working full time on those. Me by myself, I could probably make Dark and Darker exactly as it is in like three years two years or something it was one guy because you can just buy unreal marketplace assets like the only thing i wouldn't that would take forever would be touching them up and doing some custom animations and stuff but like the programming and stuff like 
if you know what you're doing in Unreal Engine, it does not take long. It does not take long at all. So I, I think this is actual BS. It's so funny to read it though. Also, they say here, fortunately we have evidence. Uh, we rely on utilizing many store-bought assets as possible. Uh, we'll soon release a list of store-bought assets. And they've also said we will also soon share logs of file lists from the Git version of control repository and stuff. So I can't wait for that info. That's gonna be very interesting. And then here they're kind of restating what I stated. So of the 950, uh, so 950 of those thousand assets are being identical. They're store-bought assets and plugins for Unreal Engine. And only 82, but only 41, because they all have double files. That's how it works for a lot of these. Uh, 41 resource of the, the similar names because of similar concept names. And the furnace person, fancy games, stuff like that. So it's okay. You know, they've, they've some ground here legally, I feel like. Oh, dude. All right. We got a good one here. We got a good one here. So, uh, you know, this is something I was asking. I was like, wait, those characters do look very similar. Remember that? And we like showed the side by side wizard versus wizard, you know, and they all, they look very similar. They actually do have a, a, a pretty ironclad explanation for that one. So... Uh, many of the 2D graphic elements, including character, concept, art, and UI, they were created in-house. So you're like, oh, they're created in-house. So therefore, they were copied. They looked like the same. The character concept artworks are based on very traditional fancy subject matter and tropes, which explain their similarities. Not really buying that. But this next part. Furthermore, the character concept artwork for both games were created by the same individual. <laughs> explain. Okay, now that makes sense. It's literally the same guy. And he's like, well, I, li I think wizards need to have a double belt. That's what wizards look like. Like okay uh, i guess uh, that, that makes more sense though that actually makes it make sense now i don't feel like it's copying at all it's really the same guy made it and he just has that same style that he's obsessed with dude then we got this super troll move right here i don't know how i feel about this one they're talking about the story being the same and they'd be like this doesn't make sense it's just generic like a it doesn't it is not copying but just for fun they asked chat gpt to do it it also gave a similar one and certainly, it's a PvP dungeon crawling game. Players compete against each other in dangerous, mysterious dungeon filled traps, puzzles, and monsters, and blah, blah. It does sound eerily similar. But uh, again, this one, I felt like Nexon had no legal standing at all. It was like not even similar at all. Like, it was crazy. So, I, it's, I mean, that, you know, you know, they thought it was crazy when they, they trolled with chat GPT for no reason in like a legal response. So. I don't know, but it definitely felt kind of crazy to me. They, I feel like they didn't need to do that, though. And just for fun, let's read their closing paragraph. So, given the information presented, it's difficult to believe that Nexon, in good faith, could reasonably believe that Iron Mace has infringed on the copyrights for their P3 project. They also provide no actual evidence that Iron Mace misappropriated Nexon's trade secret information in the creation of Dark and Darker, but instead based it on circumstantial claims. Finally, they accuse Iron Mace of a flagrant breach of Valve's SSA and SOCR, restricting our ability to provide our game to players on the largest mainstream PC game platform and severely obstructing our ability to do business. Iron Mace requests that Nexon renounce their baseless claims. If they would like to compete on merit, we welcome Nexon to promptly accommodate the comparison of source code, custom assets, and design documents with the police to quickly and decisively put an end to this matter. And that about sums up their argument. So what's my take on this? I think that they probably did not steal the game, but they were extremely heavily inspired by p3 which that could be a little questionable but the way that nexon went about this brought up a very serious question that needs to be answered now is this going to be the new form of trolling like youtube copyright strike bs that's been going around can i just go with a company can i go make like a company an llc for example <clears throat> and then can i just like make a copyright claim against anybody and be like they stole this from me and will it get taken down without them actually before, before they review the facts can i just go and be like Yes, uh, PUBG was stolen. I, I originally made this in 2016 or something and just show a bunch of random files and whatever and accuse them of something and then it gets removed from Steam. Like, I wonder, I feel, I wonder about that, like how, how it got so quickly removed from Steam. Is it just because it was Nexon? Could I just, like, not, I'm not going to do this, obviously, but could someone just impersonate a major company and then get that to happen on accident? Like, there's a lot of questions that need to be asked about this now because, like, I feel like, it should not have been taken down from the store until legal action gets proven. So that's like really sketchy feeling. And overall, I, I feel like they did not actually copy, like they didn't copy source code or anything. It's, I, would, I would say it's extremely, extremely unlikely that they copied source code. We'll see though, there's a lawsuit and all that stuff. But based on what I saw and how few of files have the same names, like 40, 41, I, I'm not buying it. I think it's... Ex and the types of files, it'd just be like Torch. Throwing... The Francisca acts a little sus. But, you know, I'm, I'm very skeptical. Very, very skeptical. I think that Dark and Darker will probably win this, but 
My question now is how long will it take? And then can they counter sue? Because let's go through a little scenario here, okay? You're, you're Iron May Studios and you spent all this time and money. I mean, God, the amount of money. Because not only those assets are nothing compared to employee wages over, you know, it's been like what, like 18, 20 months now of development. Um, so we're talking hundreds of thousands, if not millions of dollars, okay, of development, at least hundreds of thousands. And then they're going to keep having to pay these salaries during this time. And then on top of that, we have how this affects the game. Because now, if this goes out too long, they can't do their play tests. They can't release the game on the normal schedule. Uh, they lose momentum for the game. You know, you might lose momentum where if, like, suddenly the game's gone till next fall, then the next play test might only have, like, 50,000 people instead of 120, like it did, whatever, whatever it was, this on play test. So there's a lot of arguments I, I could see then where it's like, if this takes forever and then they just hard, like, Nexon just hardcore gets a big L, then Iron Man should probably be able to counter soon and be like, all right, we want damages now. We want like millions of dollars because you screwed us over basically by delaying our game and like we lost momentum and stuff. So we'll see how this goes. I'll keep an eye on this for you guys. Uh, make sure you subscribe if you want to know more. But that's it for this one, guys. It's really getting interesting out there with this dark and darker drama.